Hey guys, welcome back to Bizarre Anime Vibes, hosted by Anime Remix. I'm your host, Joku, and I'm here today with... Drip Knight. Nice to meet you. And today, we are going to be talking about a topic that we thought might interest you guys, being power scaling in anime, which we already know is going to be a very sensitive topic to a lot of you, so we're going to try to handle this as best as we can. Drip Knight? It is a minefield that is worth exploring, in my opinion. I just hope we can portray our opinion to the point where we don't get that much hate. Something like that. <laughs> anyway, without, I think that, uh, that's about it for the intro, right? Oh, yeah. Oh. All right, then. Well, before we start, don't forget to colossal smash that like button and stay tuned for all our future podcasts, anime unboxings of figures. You know, we are an anime store. And so, yeah, with that being said, let's jump into it. So, I believe the first thing that has to be discussed is what what in turn power scaling is and what in turn is kind of like a division in power scaling how we have fan base power scaling and we have what the creator has said or was inside the creator's material what they said is canonic go for their series oh for sure there's always in like lots of series you can see where people will debate about characters being stronger than this character that's this character is this this character is that oh this character could totally win this fight and this character couldn't but then other people will say otherwise or in the story later on the character will fight and they will win i think the best quote to go off of before anything is a quote from stan lee which was who would win in a fight someone asked him spider-man or hulk and stan lee answered this best it doesn't matter what you think it matters to whoever's writing it because if the person who's writing wants Spider-Man to win, he'll find a way to make Spider-Man win. If he wants Hulk to win, he'll find a way for Hulk to win. So for me, when it comes to power scaling, I think it's always best to go off of what the creators say. However, I do enjoy my dabble into just like, oh, in theory, power scaling, if that makes sense. Yeah, we're not like Death Battle or any of these fan um, animation plays or fan... Mm -hmm argument places where we try to debate if so-and-so could be so-and-so, like if Goku could be Superman or if... Goku Saitama. Goku Saitama. Which, which is, is like a big one in terms of power scaling fans. A thousand percent. It, at this point, it brings up in every convention. Yeah. So... It's, it's ridiculous. We want to make that extremely clear in the beginning, of course, to hopefully minimize the damage we're about to probably receive for our opinions. Something like that. So I believe you said you had an anime you want to start off with? Well, For sure. I mean, let's get started, shall we? Dragon Ball power scaling is, in my opinion, horrible. Absolutely horrific. I was not expecting you to say that, to be honest, since you're a diehard Dragon Ball fan, of course. Oh, yes. Thousand percent. Um, I will admit, I love Dragon Ball. I will admit, grew up with it. I just... Some of the decisions and some of the things that they just don't make sense. I'm not going to give too many examples because I do not want to spoil you, nor do I want to spoil any of the audience who has not watched. So I'm going to use some famous ones that been memed to death. I'm not going to say a line because I'm not that cringe. You know, uh, 9,000. I'm not going to say that. His but, power level is over 9,000. It, it has been spoken, the forbidden words. But yeah, with, knows that. with it said, you remember Goku going against a certain Vegeta. Are you not did you, is that where the context is? I haven't met Vegeta yet. Hmm. Gonna change this example to something that hopefully everyone will know. Let's go with Goku versus Jiren in Dragon Ball Super, where the Ultra Instinct form was introduced. Okay, I do know a little bit about that because you showed to me a few years ago. And do you know of course like obviously it's I think we all guess who could won that fight. Goku. Yeah. So, with that one being uh, obvious, then I think we could dive into that and see how power scaling just right then and there was hard. Jiren was a character introduced with no backstory, not until the final episode. That might might, might have been I, unnecessary to mention, but what? Jiren is a character purely there to push Goku past limits because Goku is already broken from the previous arcs that he's been in, because he had to surpass limit in order to beat the villain. Every time there's a new villain, 
Goku what must do what surpasses the limits. And every time he does that, newer villains that are even stronger have to come in to add more tension. And that just keeps raising the stake, raising the stake, raising the power to, well, numbers that are, are probably undefinable. But you're going to probably see people that can try to define it. I was going to say, um, from what, because I'm still on Dragon Ball, I have like 10 episodes left, but just going to kick King Piccolo's fight, spoilers for Dragon Ball with King Piccolo. Goku obviously was struggling to fight King Piccolo. King Piccolo was said to be the strongest in the world, etc., etc., but Goku, of course, overcame him. But then, so Goku's like, okay, I beat one of the strongest heroes shows. A few episodes later, there's Mr. Popo, who Goku struggles with even more. So could one debate that Mr. Popo is stronger than King Piccolo? The point is, you wouldn't say that right away, because King Piccolo has greater feats with killing Shenron, um... Be Master Roshi. Be Master Roshi, be, beating everyone in the series except Goku, essentially, at that point. But Goku struggled more against Mr. Popo, I would say, well, right after. And then people can also make the debate, like, Goku wasn't, like, bloodlust mode. Not bloodlust, but he was, like, exactly. fighting and then you for can real. Debate that Goku wasn't fighting for real. And the point is, it's like, you can go back and forth with power scaling. And I feel like, uh, from what I have seen in Dragon Ball already, it's not good. And I just... I'm not expecting it to get any better, if anything worse. Enjoy Z. I think Z does the power scaling the best. I think OG Dragon Ball does it... It's not bad, but it's, it's not good. Because, like, it feels understandable, like, where everyone is in terms of strength. For the most part, there's a few characters where it's like... Like, uh, Ten... Uh, not... Uh, what's his name? Tien? Little, Tien. Oh, no, not Tien. Three what's eye? Uh, Or is it Krillin? No, the other one. The little dude. Yamcha? Oh, uh, Chaozu. Chaozu, Yeah. It feels like he's supposed to be, he was introduced to be at a similar level as Tien, but then he lost to Krillin because of a math joke, you know what I mean? Which is like, yeah, but then he was, after that point, like, he was kicking Krillin's ass, and then right after he lost that fight, he was never shown to be strong in any way, losing to King Piccolo in one hit, um, not being able to do anything, really. And maybe it gets explained later down the line, but it just feels like he was introduced to be strong. And the second he took his first L, it's like, okay, this character is weak Like, now. he used to be, like, he was a training partner. Like, he was equal with Tien yeah, and then it's just introduced. Yeah, like, he was Tien's training partner from what I saw. And then after he lost to Krillin, Tien just skyrocketed in terms of level. And it was like, oh, they're not even comparable anymore. Tien is on this same level or very close to Goku by the end of the tournament. But Chiatsu? Uh, Chiatsu? Chiatsu. Chiatsu is weaker than Krillin, which... I guess, but also, or like, does that make him weaker than Yamcha? I mean, that's like, actually a good example that you brought because we don't really, we can't take into fact, like, how would a certain character think if they went to battle with another character? Exactly. Like, if, uh, like, as an example, like, if Chaozu and Krillin, if Krillin ever came up with the idea that he did to beat Chaozu, then in that case, technically, Chaozu Are we saying won. that that means Chaozu is really weak because math jokes? Like, if, so Yamcha. Or, like, hell, could uh, Emperor Pilaf beat y uh, Chatsu if he knows how to trick him with math jokes? The and point I is, it feels very, it feels very, like, confusing and not well-balanced, in a sense. So, instead of saying, who is stronger than who, or who could win in a fight, maybe a better question would be, who has better feats of strength? Yeah, like, I think that's definitely better, because who could win in a fight? I hate that, by the way, with power scaling in general. Oh, this character could be that character, so this character's stronger. No, because if there's a godly fire dude and his only weakness is water, and there's a weak water dude, the weak water dude could beat him, but that doesn't make... You know what I mean? I'm trying to think of an like, example uh, in anime. I don't know, oh, kind of perfect. Perfect example I could think of. One Piece. Skypea spoilers. Luffy and Enaru. Oh, yeah. Actually, Luffy really was way weaker than Enru. Enru had observation hockey. Enru had one of the most broken devil fruits of all time. Luffy didn't have any of his gears. Luffy didn't have any hockey at all that he was aware of. And he was able to be Enru. Why? Because of the matchup. Luffy is not stronger than Enru in that moment. But Luffy is a perfect counter to Enru. So, you could... So, at least... I hope I'm not offending anyone when I say this. Luffy at Skypea was not stronger than Enaru in terms of strength and feats, but Luffy could beat Enaru because of his double fruit. Purely because of circumstance. Exactly. And Enaru tried to come up with other ways to kind of Exactly, and it. he was doing stuff, but because he couldn't use the element he was so used to, 
he couldn't beat Luffy. But again, Luffy was not stronger than Enru. Hell, even Oda went on to say that if Enru had a bounty at the time of Skypea, his bounty, if he was on the like main world, he would have been issued a bounty of 500 million. Which Did Oda under- ever say that he might have been a warlord level? He said 500 million, which keep in mind at that point, the highest bounty in the series was in like 200 million. So like this was supposed to be like in context, some like ridiculous high feet bounty that no one has ever touched in the series. What was crocodiles in like warlord wise? 84. Oh, 84 million. Oh, and that is that definitely. And that's warlord. And, that, and like Doflamingo and Kuma was like 196, I think. Uh, Doflamingo was like 200 something. 34 and th- at that point those were the highest bounties or like it may be and I 396 guess we using bounties as a power scaling yeah thing? which is not true but like we can talk about that in a second but the point is enru being issued a 500,000 uh billion berry or mi- sorry million berry was oda's sense of like a sense of power scaling and by putting that up there he's showing like oh enru was the strongest character in the series in that moment by skype enru was the strongest not including like shanks or dragon because you know but he was the strongest character we've seen do anything. Like, a real fight. Like, I guess, technically, at that point, the strongest character introduced was technically Gold Roger. It was Ro- Yeah, Gold obviously, Roger. the oldest characters. But, I mean, in terms of, like, characters who were active in the oh, story. In the story? Enru then... was the strongest. Yeah. So, but Luffy was able to beat him. So, the point is of that whole debate is that a character... I don't like to in... I don't like to have two characters say who could win in a fight because there's multiple factors to it. It's more of what are the feats? What can this character do? Because, like, Enaru was, in my opinion, stronger than Luffy in Skypea, but Enaru couldn't beat Luffy in a one-on-one. But he could beat, he literally did beat everyone else in Skypea one one on hell, it was like 5v1 at one point. And people even tried to, like, sneak attack him. And The only character who stood, who came close was Wiper. And that was at the, uh, basically breaking his hand with the dials. The impact dial, because he absorbed the hit and sent it back. And okay. even that, when he killed Enaru, he did. And Ru brought himself back to life, showing, like, there's no beating him unless you're immune to electricity, which so happened Luffy was, or... Armor hockey, which was... Or later on in the series introduced, like, with, like, certain hockey levels and stuff like that. But the point is, at the time, Enru was not stronger than Luffy, or was stronger than Luffy, but he couldn't beat Luffy in 1v1. So 1v1 debates are always... those. I separate 1v1 debates versus who's stronger debates. Because I think those are two different conversations. Saying, oh, can this character beat this character? Is different from, oh, is this character stronger than this character? I agree. Moving on to that, since we're already on the topic of One Piece. One Piece is power scaling. I, One Piece is my favorite anime. I love it to death. I can talk about it for hours. But, oh my god, do I try to avoid power scaling conversations with certain people. Because the way some of y'all hold your characters... I mean, I'm guilty of this. I hold Brook to a high extent. Uh, Perona. I did Boa, and then, I mean, recently Boa was proven... To, there was a reason why you should rank her high. Etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Point is, with One Piece, uh, specifically Zoro fans, uh, you never really want to start that debate. Uh, Zoro fans are the worst, I assume? Yeah. No offense to any Zoro fans. If you're watching us, we love you. But, like... It definitely subscribe. If you're subscribed, you... We we love you, Zoro fans, but Zoro fans can just be really annoying sometimes. There was times when uh, Zoro fans at one point in Wano, Wano-ish, I mean, I don't really think it's spoilers, uh, but I guess technically there's, it's, you should be fine if you're just caught up in general or like Mine. understand where Wano is, if you're in Wano at all. But there was a theory known as ZKK, and it was very popular because of the, the these initials were everywhere. And what they stood for was Zoro kills Kaido. And it was the theory that Zoro was going to be the one to defeat Kaido. To defeat or, like, kill him? Kill him. Defeat. It's kill. Like, knock defeat. out. Like... To be the one to kill Zoro. He knows. Kill Kaido. Not defeat him. Kill him. There was multiple reasons behind this. And I agree. I will admit, like, there was a lot of stuff backing it up that made sense. But Kaido, the strongest character in the series... Zoro's cool, but it was never going to happen. And what I'm about to say is spoilers for uh, Wano Act 3, a uh, roof piece. Is it been animated yet? Yes, it's been animated. So if you're an anime, you're fine. But like manga, or and, like if you've seen the anime, caught up on anime, you should be fine. I think it happened like episode 10, 
27. So, yeah. Zoro attacks Kaido, and he uses his full string. He uses nine sword style, Ashura, his strongest attack, hits Kaido. Kaido bursts with blood, like, he's, like he scars Kaido permanently. And then, Zoro's like, that was everything. Kaido doesn't even fall. He just, like, screams and blood bursts everywhere, and he gets scarred, but he never falls. And Zoro's like, seriously? That was everything I had. I was hoping to at least make you fall for a second. And then like Zoro passes out. Hmm? Oh, like, that made him pass out. Pass Zoro out. literally used everything he had, his full strength, and all he was able to do was scar Kaido. Which is, I mean, good feat. It's Kaido. Like, Zoro's strong, and he proved it, but... Killing Kaido, like, that's why I'm just like... At his full strength, all he was able to do was scar him. And the full strength, and he literally got knocked out. Granted. Wait, didn't. Also, around this time. Zoro before... did defend the attack from Kaido and Big Mom. Mm. So you could debate, like, oh, he wasn't at his full strength. And I'll tell you right now, I know Zoro fans who do use that debate. But. Even at full strength, he's not, like, cutting Kaido's head off or anything. Now, if he was at full health, still using full strength. I understand Kaido wasn't at full strength, because Kaido fought the Akaza 9, he, uh, Got fought, stabbed. he literally fought, um, Luffy, Law, Kid, before that, Zoro defended, took a hit, yeah, it was rough, and then he used his ultimate attack and passed out. Point is, Zoro fans, when it comes to ranking that character, I will admit he's strong, I think he's definitely one of the strongest characters in the show, well, relatively speaking, but he's not... He's not as high as people like to put him. There's people who debate that he's stronger than Luffy. And I'm just like, I multiple times throughout the story. And I'm like, Luffy's exactly. always the strongest. It's the classic shonen, uh, the classic shonen joke that, oh yeah, the main character sits around, laughs, eats, sleeps all day. And the side character is always training to be stronger. And yet the main character is always stronger. And I think that is um, like, it's the shonen trope. You know, Luffy will always be stronger than Zora. And especially after... A certain something that happens in the manga that will not be named. I can't see any Zoro fans saying that Zoro is stronger than Luffy, like without, like you know, joking. Uh, even if Zoro were to get like a new power, there's. I feel like it's. I'm not gonna say anything more on that, but like, Luffy is stronger than Zoro, and when it comes to One Piece power scaling, Zoro fans are typically seen as the worst. And also the worst debate. I remember you once told me Sanji versus Zoro. That one is like, the worst debate to ever. I was had. gonna avoid that conversation. <laughs> But yeah, um, again, when it comes to Sanji versus Zoro, I'll say simply like this. It's kind of like Goku versus Vegeta. No one ever wants to talk about it. No one should ever talk about it because, yes, Zoro is, I think, stronger than Sanji. But in terms of relevance to Luffy, he is equal. Robin put it best, they are the wings to the Pirate King, the future Pirate King. Zoro and Sanji are both equal in terms of how... They represent um, Luffy or what they do for Luffy, but when it comes to pure strength, I don't think it's fair to even say that. And I mean, I even had a, got into a huge debate with people because I the one time I did decide to power scale, uh, I said that I believe the monster trio is no more because Jinbei being a part of the crew now and possibly at the time thinking Yamato would join, whether Yamato joins or not is, you know, still up in the air, but with Yamato and Jinbei joining, or Yamato possibly joining and Jinbei joining, I thought the monster trio was dead. I And what I meant by that was not that Luffy, Zoro, Sanji will always be, you know, but the term monster trio in One Piece was made at the time to show that Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji were the strongest on the crew by a huge margin. But after Jinbei and Yamato, I was like, I don't think that's a fair term. I think the new term should have been Wings of the Pirate King because those three will always be special to the story in some way. But with characters like Jinbei and Yamato joining, I didn't think it was fair to still say Monster Trio when Jinbei and Yamato are equal. And got roasted. Oh yeah, people. One Piece fans went off on me. What thinking, was the big thing they used against you? You think they misunderstood the fact that I? They thought I meant like Sanji is no longer relevant in the Monster Trio, which is not what I was saying. I was saying that there should be a new term, like the wings for the Pirate King, because Monster Trio, I felt like, was a dead term because of what it represented when it was introduced, showing that they were strongest in the crew. They were the three pillars. They were the three pillars of in terms of strength. That's no longer true. See what I mean? Or you could even say, now, um, 
Uh, the if four Yamato emperors. joins, it'll it'll change it. But now, mm-hmm. what about if you say about the four emperors? No, the the three pillars are now Zoro, Sanji, and Jinbei, and Luffy is at the top. There, mm-hmm. that's the whole point. There's multiple different ways you can go about One Piece and power scaling. And again, I I don't know if you know this. Monster Tree was a fan made term. It's never been used in the story. There was a, one line in the story where Nami or Usopp referred to them as monsters, but that's it. They've never said, "Oh, the Monster Trio will go get him or anything." And that's where it was inspired? The fan base, yeah, by one that one line where they're like, oh, they're like monsters. It has never been used officially in any One Piece media as far as I'm concerned. And the fact that that's a fan-made term should tell you a lot about power scaling One Piece. That they power scaled, like, I mean, it it was a canon power scaling of Zanchi, Zoro, and Luffy being at the top. So similar to, like, how other animes have, like, three big ones, like My Hero Academia, how they have Deku, Todoroki... But that's and more of, like, leads. You know what I mean? In terms of strength, it was Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, and they separated them in the story with Nami saying, like, oh, yeah, those three are, like, monsters. They're way stronger. Like, that is separating, but the term monster trio is fan-made. Does that make sense? No one in the story has ever said they're a, they're the monster trio of the Straw Hat crew or anything. It's just they're they just mon- say, like, if we see one person in the Straw Hat, we're like, oh, they're, they're part of with the strongest... They're part of... The point is, like, the Monster Trio is fan-made. The term. Oda definitely is in... Oda, the creator of One Piece, is definitely saying that Luffy, Zoro, Sanji are, like, a trio that are separated from everyone else, but he never gave it a name. Monster Trio was the name the fan base gave it. Does that make sense? The only thing that Oda has ever acknowledged was the Four Emperors. Yeah. Like, Four Emperors, Warlords. But even then, if you... Like, I, we should probably change the topic soon, but, like, just to end it up on this, because you mentioned that, there's now debates in the fandom. Who are Yonkos equal levels to the admirals? Are like how do you rank Yonkos and admirals and warlords? And because and I think that's a messy argument. Warlords are not equal. We need to get that out of the way because if you're telling me Mihawk was on the same level as Gecko Moria, then we need to have a talk. Or, or we need to... wasn't the same level as I think Crocodile wasn't the same level as Dopamingo. For the time of the story, sure. If you want to say about a pre gear Luffy, pre hockey Luffy, and a post gear post like gear fourth Luffy, hockey Luffy, I would debate otherwise, but Touche, too sure. And also the fact that Crocodile was a master of his devil fruit but never learned how to awaken it, as far as we're concerned. It's very um Early One Piece has its issues at certain moments. But moving past One Piece, because we've been on that for a while, let's talk about another anime with power scaling. That we think is pretty good. Uh, My Hero. I think My Hero has pretty good power scaling in the sense that All Might is always seen at the top. You know what I mean? And they say that since day one. All Might is the strongest hero. No, no one has been able to beat him. People have come close with All for One more specifically, but no one has ever been able to straight up beat All Might. And even by the end of the series, well, not end of the series, the end of All Might's run, I guess Rain as the number one. Rain, yeah, as All Might's Rain as number one. He was still never beaten by everyone. He was technically beaten by himself, in a sense. He could no longer, he pushed himself too far. Mm. And yeah. since day one, they proved that point that All Might was the strongest. And yeah, that can be like, oh, then how much stronger was he? But they just set that up in day one. It's similar to Jujutsu Kaisen. Gojo is the strongest. You know what I mean? And I they- hate when people keep saying, like, Oh wait, um remember what? the infamous um Deku one million percent? Yeah, could that be I, stronger than All Might and all that? I hated smart? that so much that I remember when the creator even had to come out saying Deku was only screaming one million percent as a boost of motivation. It exactly. wasn't him actually using one million percent. He said percent. if you want to know how strong Deku was at one million percent, he said in actuality it was three hundred percent. Which is what All Might had did before when he fought the Nomu. Oh using three hundred you mm-hmm. like uh, 300 punches. I believe there's a line where he's fighting the Nomu during the USJ incident. And he canonically says something about 300% of his power, or three times his power. Right, because it took like 300 muddy blows. But in my gay day, it would took in five muddy exactly. blows. But even then, he was fighting more than 100%. So showing Deku and that moment was three times stronger than All Might at 100%. But All Might is still the number one. And Deku, the only person who could be stronger than Deku is, or than All Might is Deku, if he learns to fully develop the quirk 
and all that. But Oh, after a time skip. Or after a time skip. But the point is, I don't really expect anything to go down like that, you know? Yeah, and I guess... Bro, at least, like, I more specifically, because I feel like I kind of lost my sentence there. All Might being the strongest and Deku being the only character who could potentially beat All Might in terms of strength is kind of said in the story. You know, there's no, like, debating that, I feel like. Yeah. All... Deku has the most potential. The most potential. There, That's the best way to The put most it. potential to beat All Might. But at the current point, at least in the anime, I don't know about the manga, there's no possible way Deku would beat All Might in his prime. And I give credit to Horikoshi, the creator of My Hero. I believe it's Horikoshi. I give credit to him, which I can't say about a lot of stuff he does, but I give credit that he wrote All Might at his prime, or in his strongest, his strong form, out of the story. Because by doing that, it kind of shuts down the conversations. Mm. By beating All for One in that moment, who's said to be the strongest villain or whatever, there's no like, oh, then All Might could do this, because, and we never got to see All Might in his prime. That's true. So showing us, showing us that All Might in that moment was still able to beat All for One at his strongest, debatably, or and whatever. People, people still have to know, All Might, back in his prime, fought All for One in his prime, and All Might won. Exactly. And then I think All Might did it again. Just Hey guys, sorry about that. Our mic shut off. Someone forgot to charge it. And so we're just going to wrap this here. Let you guys know that overall we think power scaling is a lot of times a bad thing in anime series, but it has potential to invoke interesting conversations. And I will say I like to debate a lot of the time. It's one of my favorite things to do. So power scaling kind of gives us way to just debating in general. So I don't hate it. I just hate some of the way power scalers think, if that makes sense, especially in certain things like I was mentioning, like one, two, three, one, four things. Does that make sense for For me, I'm going to say power scaling is a nice implication when they add to the story, so you know, like, okay, this guy is, like, the number one dog. Do not ever mess with him. Again, big example we were speaking of with All Might, how he was a true pillar of strength. And no one ever surpassed him. And currently now, with him not being in his prime anymore, really, there, you can't really make a baby like, oh, now that Bakugo now maybe is stronger, he can probably be that. That's already an issue in the house. Oh. Or Endeavor, he would be like, oh, wow, Endeavor has this new Providence for like, now we can beat all my friends. Yeah. Well, we can't somebody... You can't, then we'll never know. I will say this, by the way, you mentioned Demon Slayer really quick. I was going to mention how I like the power scale of the Demon Slayer because it has been set in stone. Like, I believe the creator at that point came out and said the breaking of the Hashira. Obviously, with the Demon Slayer, is the, uh, one of the upper moves and lower moves, and they are ranked. So it kind of gives an in canon ranking to how strong the Demon and uh, Demon Slayers are, which I really appreciate, and I think it's really good because it kind of sucks uh, the base for a lot of power scaling in terms of like fans. Like, oh, would this character win this? Would this character win that? You can't really say because it's already been so obviously matchup like we mentioned with one piece matchup one piece one in particular is a whole other conversation but in terms of strength itself it's set in stone and i love that i love when series kind of just do that in its own way and if a character like so happens to get stronger then they mention that it's gonna set but yeah that, that seems to be about it right that is our opinions about power scaling please tell us in the comments below what is your opinion of power scaling? How do you feel about fan-based power scaling, satanic power scaling, and is it the third type of power scaling that we just never mentioned? Please let us know. And if there's anything I said in particular, or he said in particular, that pissed you off, mention in the comments, we'll be more than happy to debate with you guys. Obviously, that's very peaceful and a simple man. So that being said, one last time, don't forget to go also smash that like button, and stay subscribed, to catch up with our latest podcast, anime, unboxing videos, and more. Alright guys, you guys stay safe and have a good one.